So I moved here from Wisconsin um, about four years ago. I moved here um, right at the end of my eighth grade summer. And it was actually a pretty quick turnaround. I didn't know that I was actually gonna move to Massachusetts until like July. And then by August, I was gone. And it was just so fast. Everything was really fast. We packed up all our stuff and we just went. Um, Sorry, one second. <laughs> it was pretty difficult for me. Um, it was just like, it was, I was thrown into a new situation and I didn't know anybody. There was no like sort of like connections I have. Sometimes we move places where like we have family members or we have somebody that we know, but completely new place for us. So nobody knew I was and nobody particularly wanted to talk to me. It's pretty difficult. You know, I tried the whole thing where like, you know, you talk to a new person every day and hopefully, you know, you find somebody. That particular like skill was just not working with me or at least like, when, it, when I did try it, it felt like I was just like a pit stop. And then as soon as like somebody that I actually knew came around, they would just leave me and go talk to that person. So that was for about two months. It was, it was a troubling time. I, I mainly spent my time trying to just like block out the loneliness with like video games with my friends from Wisconsin, which did bite me in the butt um, because of the time difference. So they're only one hour behind, but that one hour eats up. So like, let's say they play games until like midnight let's, or like uh, 12 at night. That means that I'm up all the way till 1 a.m. And then when I have to get up for school at like 6 a.m., I'm only getting five hours of sleep. So not the best for a high schooler. Um, I definitely was really tired every morning. So what I did do is I, I kind of sought out help. Um, the first person I went to was my guidance counselor and she definitely was the best person that I could have gone to. She she really helped me. Um, first, by just like giving me the perspective of the students at the school and just the perspective of like, at first I thought that like, it'd just be easier to like just merge in, but then it just, it just wasn't the case. She just gave me that perspective. Just like, just understand where these kids are coming from. Like they've all grown up in Boston. So they all know the Boston area. So it might just be hard for you to like become adjusted to that um, new culture and new like terms of life in that way. So then she also gave me just like different ideas of like how to meet new people. So I was trying to, as I mentioned before, I was trying to whole like go to a new person every time. Um, not the best idea <laughs> um, because like what I was doing was I was even talking to people outside of my grade. So I'd be talking to like seniors, I'm talking to juniors, I'm talking to sophomores. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's hard to find things in common with people that are like grades ahead of you because um, they're all going through different things. They're going through like driver's ed or like AP classes, which aren't particularly things you can take as a freshman. So what she said instead was, um, instead of finding random things, try like uh, different clubs and different groups because those are like smaller settings where you can f kind of like lose some of the nervousness and some of the anxiousness what I did from there is there's like in the hallway there's like a list of clubs and sports running every single day and I just made my mission to try a different club every single day every single week I think the first club I tried was anime club um, pretty fun club did not continue it um, just w wasn't my thing but I, um, I moved on to different clubs like art club pottery club I, I play a band instrument, I play the saxophone. So I joined jazz band and I joined um, pep band. And those two, particularly like the music and the pottery club were where I found the most success in just like meeting people that I actually like talking to and that actually like talking to me because we share um, similar interests. I found a lot of success in those groups. Um, and it wasn't just like instant things where like we were just friends at that, but it was at least just people that I could build a relationship with. So like first we'd like end up like we talk in like these um the club settings and then we'd like talk in the hallways. Maybe we'd sit each, sit with each other at lunch. And then like eventually through like, I don't know, a month or so or two months or so, I started hanging out with these people like outside of school. You know, maybe we go watch a school basketball game together, which is daunting in itself, but it was pretty fun. My main point was is that it's not like sometimes you have to change your approach because sometimes the like your first approach isn't going to work and it's not particularly what you're doing you need to find a way that you'll react better or people i guess like my big thing was finding help from people that like 
are aware of the situation or like have a better understanding than you do. Um, and that could really be anything. That, that can be anybody is what I mean. Um, that could be your parents, that could be guidance counselors, that could be Miss Dave, Miss Amanda, Miss Alexis. A couple of things stand out, my Zook, though. It sounds like you, um, you didn't give up. Yeah. Which was really important because it sounds like having friends and finding those people was important to you like it is for all of us. Yeah. Another thing that is you were, it sounds like you were willing to work at it. Yeah. Which was, which was really important, an important thing. Like he was, Mazuk was willing to try different clubs, even though he might not have normally thought about pottery. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it then maybe found out that you loved it to, to yeah. find the people that you enjoyed being with the most. It sounds like you worked really hard to make yeah. that happen. And I definitely had some, some bad days where I was like, okay, I need a break. And I, I would take that like whole day off. I'd go home, I'd play my video games, you know, I'd go lay on my bed and just not do anything. But then the next day, I really just wanted to start fresh. I'd forget about everything else that happened the previous day and try to move on because, I don't know, high schoolers' attention spans are not that long. <laughs> um, they will definitely forget about anything you did the previous day. It doesn't or, change in college either. No. Like, it does college not. is even bigger. There's like mm -hmm. thousands of people. You should, you'll... Think about the resiliency of that guy. I mean, here he comes from a different state to this school, you know, it doesn't know anybody and just is resiliently trying to go at it like day after day. Because we have kids in here, Marzuk, you probably don't know this, that will say, well, I want friends just to come to me. I wait for them to come to me. Mm -hmm. And and they, then they're wondering, like, why is that happening? Why don't I have friends? Because that's the mentality of I'm going to, like, wait for these people to come to me. Yeah. Versus what you did is you said, no, I'm going to go to them and I'm going to join clubs that are not uh, even my uh, favorites to, to try yeah. to get meet people. So, like, that resiliency is really kind of cool. You guys can all learn from what his experience was for that.